Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the post office? Use Stamps.com instead. For a no-risk trial and $110 bonus offer, use promo code TWIST. And by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting using the promo code START to begin your free trial. Today on the program, it's all Ask Jason and Tyler is here, of course. We're going to tackle some very hard questions for developers like, which business should I be in? How do I get a minimal viable product into the market? How do I find developers? How do I become a developer? All these very pressing issues are going to be answered today on This Week in Startups. Stick with us, please. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. How it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money Spend the money and defeat you yeah. Money is the root of all evil what? Funny how it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money Spend the money and defeat you Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Startups. We are cruising right along episode number 297, and it's our All Ask Jason special. With me, of course, is my partner in crime, Mr. Tyler Crowley. How you doing? Doing pretty well, Jake. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You almost went into that NPR voice. <laughs> With your tea over there. Look yep. at the service you get here. You become like a superstar around the building. <laughs> that, like They're bringing you yeah. your tea, but it's not like a tea bag. You like actually have the oh, loose yeah. tea leaves. I do the loose leaf tea. Do you have a rider on your contract yeah, with me? Yeah, loose like leaf that? green tea. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Loose, that's a, Adagio. That's, oh, ad, oh, Adagio. Uh, organic. Organic Adagio. Yeah. Okay, very good. I'm very happy for you there, Tyler. Hey, um, listen, there is a back channel, and the back channel is all the people who are the super fans of the show, 250 of them. And if you go to twistlist.co, twistlist.co, T-W-I-S-T, L-I-S-T.co. You can join the backlist. That's where the super fans are discussing startups all day long. It's like our own little secret club. Uh, you can go there, twistlist.co, and join. And this show uh, and all the questions we're going to answer in it brought to you by our friends at stamps.com. Going to the post office is a complete waste of time. And the U.S. Postal Service offers a lot of great value in terms of the products like media mail and bulk and all this other stuff priority all these great services that perform as well as some of the other competing services out there even better in some cases and cost a lot less but going to the post office we all know that can be a drag and a waste of time with stamps you can buy and print official u.s postage for any letter or package listen to me i use the product we had to pick who the sponsors are on the program and stamps.com is one of those great products that i've used for so long go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the page and use the promo code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T, and you will get a no risk, no risk, four-week trial offer and a $110 bonus offer, free digital scale and up to $55 in free postage. They basically want to get you guys as a customer because they know that the people who listen to the show are opinion leaders and they're going to give you a great deal. So go to stamps.com, click on the microphone and use the promo code TWIST. Listen, I use the product. It's a great product. You don't want to go to the post office. And you also don't want to use all those competing services that are really expensive. I just read that the uh, the lunch ticker at the postal service is thinking about doing same-day delivery. Hmm. You know, like TaskRabbit kind of stuff. Like, you know, we're going to get you your stuff in the same day in major metropolitan areas. Well, it's amazing. If the U.S. Postal Service was a startup, they would do same-day delivery. Of course they would. And you know what? The U.S. Postal Service is uh, really iterating and uh, providing great services, and Stamps.com is the best way to interface with them. Go ahead and go to Stamps.com and buy and print official U.S. postage. No wasted postage because you get the scale for free. You can measure everything. You know, I used to always put two or three extra stamps on stuff. Incredibly wasteful, especially if you're going to do 10 items a week. You can just think about the waste. You're wasting dozens of stamps a month. Now you can do the exact weight of the package. Today on the program, and thank you, stamps.com. Go to stamps.com, click on twist. Uh, I'm sorry, click on the microphone on the top of the page and type in twist to get your special bonus offer. Thank you. Uh, So you guys know about Ask Jason. It was a segment we had on the show. We don't have the time because there's so many shows, so many interviews, that what we do now is we get all the Ask Jasons together and we do just an episode of Ask Jason. What this is, people who have pressing questions, the best questions we get, and I get hundreds of emails a day. I send a lot of times, I just forward to askjason at thisweekend.com, the best ones, and we collect them, and uh, every month or two, we do one of these episodes where people ask me a question. Our first caller is Dan Norris, and he is on the line. Dan, are you there? I am. Thanks for having me, Jason. 
Uh, pleasure to have you on the program. You a longtime fan? Have you been on the been with the program for a little while, or or new to the show? I have. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, I, I think I started about episode 50 or so, and I worked backwards. And yeah. Oh wow! I'm, I'm loving. Great. Uh, hold on one second while Tyler interrupts the show with a, rebooting his computer. Tyler. Sorry about that. <laughs> Unbelievable. The interruption. Talk to Steve Jobs. That was a hard crash. That was a hard, was it a hard crash? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So Dan, um, do you have a favorite a uh, favorite episode, favorite guest? Uh, probably, probably Chris Sucker. After that, two yeah. part one the other week. That was cool. Uh, yeah. I really like the um, I really like the Friday news roundup shows. Oh, very good, very yeah. good. All right, well that's good. Um, so enough about me and what you like about me. Let's go on to your question. <laughs> what is your question? Okay, so a couple of months ago, I started a, what was going to be a, like a dashboard for small businesses. It was going to bring in their stats from different places, and it was called Web Control Room. And I'm probably a month, or well, maybe less than a month away from launching that, and I guess I'm beginning to think that the name Web Control Room is not sexy enough, and I'm also beginning to look at the data and seeing that I'm not sure that like the typical small business owner really wants to log into another dashboard. And well, I guess my question is, I have a new name, Informly, and the domain will be inform.ly, and I'm thinking about basically either whether I shift now before I launch and focus it more around um, it'll still be a dashboard, but focused more around uh, like an email or a daily email if people want to get an email each day. Mm-hmm. And or do I listen to what everyone else is saying and just launch right now because I haven't launched yet? Okay, so you have Web Control Room, um, and this is a business where small businesses uh, can get analytics across a range of different services. So. <coughs> I pull in my clout, my PayPal, my Google Analytics, and you make a dashboard. That's a great idea for a business, by the way. People love more information to make better decisions. And if you have these dashboards and you pull in all this information, of course, you don't need to have as many employees because you're more efficient, right? You don't just need to say to a receptionist or an analyst or a researcher, hey, get me this data, put it in a spreadsheet, combine it. So you have a good idea. Dashboards are a great business. Uh, people will pay for this kind of stuff. Small businesses, medium-sized businesses. So I think that there's demand for the product. I don't think Web Control Room is a bad name, by the way. I think it's kind of nice. What is your competing name again? Informally. Um, well, informally is the name I'm thinking of moving to. And okay. the main reason is because I'm thinking that after I launch, I might bring in different sorts of business information, not just statistics. And Got it. As like a service that brings in lots of business information, the name web can starts to feel a little bit less relevant. All right. So people know that I'm an expert when it comes to uh, naming companies and branding companies. That's why I'll, I've had people have me on their, like ask me to be on their boards just for this issue. So I've been through this a lot. Um, so there's two issues here. The first question you have is, is it okay to launch with one name and change to another? The answer is, Obviously, it's not optimal, but it's fine. About.com was launched as the mining company in New York, and they had a terrible domain name, The Mining Co. But About.com, eventually, when they got that domain name, became a great business. Groupon was the point. And Groupon was the point. Right, so changing and having success is absolutely completely possible. It is not a big deal. It happens all the time. Now, why do people make it into a big deal? Well, because branding and changing your brand name, it could be looked at as a sign of weakness. So if the business is growing, nobody cares. If the business is trending downward, then people care. So if Mahalo.com is having a rough time, and I say I'm going to change it to Inside.com, people are like, oh, Mahalo's having a tough time. It's a sign of weakness. But if Inside.com was taking off and the business was doing great, and it might be, I might not be, I'm not going to say anything here on the program, but then they say, oh, that's genius, right? So really what other people think, what the press think, what the journalists think, it doesn't really matter. What matters is what your customers think. Um, so it's generally, I would say, a small issue in the grand scheme of things, changing a name. A name change, not such a big deal. It happens all the time. Um, it's not optimal, but it's not something to lose sleep over. Now, let's get into the two different names, because that's what I like. Informally, there's a lot of people adding L-Y to names these days, right? Mm-hmm. Reportly, Whatever. Recurly. Recurly, swirly, durly, whatever. Everybody wants to put an L-Y <laughs> in there. That's because Libya was the dot bit.ly, was the dot com extension. I think right? bit.ly was one of the first to really kind bit.ly of... Bit.ly was one of the first. Now, do you are you thinking about doing yeah. a dot L-Y, or are you thinking about actually doing a dot com? Yeah. So you're thinking about... Dot the, L-Y. Okay. So then you get into this, oh, does it matter 
that you have a .ly or a .co versus a .com or a .net. The truth is, given that we're moving to an app ecosystem and that we're moving to, um, you know, if you do a search and if you're launch.co, I think when you type in the word launch, we, we're probably number two for launch, even though we have launch.co and Google owns launch and is redirect, I mean, Yahoo owns the word launch.com and is redirecting it. Um, when you type in launch, we are, what are we now? We're number five. Launch.org is number one. Um, and so, uh, and if you like type launch conference, we come up, uh, you know, as well uh, in, you know, number one or whatever. So it's not that big of a deal. People will find you. Uh, you'll be in the top three or four. It's not going to be that difficult. So um, I don't have a problem with the .ly. Web control room to me sounds like a product for people who are sysadmins. Mm -hmm. It evokes yeah, control and, room. Enterprise, like, yeah. It, more than enterprise, more yeah. sysadmin. But mm -hmm. informally means knowledge, information, inform, and informally, there's like informally advising. It's like they sort of play on words, like informally discussing something, but also informing me. Informally, I really like the name informally. I do too. It, has a, it rolls off the tongue. It's a better name. Um, and so while web control is not a bad name, it'd be a great name, like you're saying, for doing you know, your server load times or whatever. So clearly we know which one's the better name and why. Um, I don't think we have to go too much into that. If you launch with Web Control Room now and you have five beta clients, it's not the end of the world. In fact, I advise some people to launch their startups with a bogus name so that it doesn't get picked up in the press so they can still launch at the launch festival in March. And I tell them, yeah, just launch under like Web Control name and then at the launch and you know, don't tell anybody in California about it. Don't buy any ads in California. Just buy ads in Canada and middle America. And then when you're ready, take the same exact product, change the logo, and nobody will ever know it's launched, and no journalist will ever write about it because you hit it in plain sight. So um, I don't think there's a problem with launching as Web Control Room if you want to get beta users on it. And then you can build out the informally branding and, and uh, have that ready when you're ready to go. Yeah, I'll, I'll just um, say I... I I kind of did that a little bit, like a few months ago. I did like a bit of a beta launch, and I do have, I've, I had about a thousand people sign up, and I've got about 150 or so actively using it. So that's why I'm sort of thinking, this time, I want to make sure that the launch gets noticed. So I'm kind of thinking the name might be a factor in that. I think the branding would be great for it. Like for example, if you wanted to be in one of the all these events, have you gotten press for Web Control Room yet? Aside from only really, lo only really local press, but yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't made too much of an effort yet. If you rebrand the company and then start it over as that, you could probably apply to Launch Festival, TechCrunch Disrupt, Demo, or, or the local ones. Are you in Melbourne or in Sydney? Where are you? I, I'm in the Gold Coast, but yeah, an hour, an hour or so from there by plane. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, you could go to any one of those launch events with the new name and with slightly different interface, and it's a, it's a new company, you know? So um, I think it's a smart idea to, to launch it as a new company and move the 150 o people over and just let them know you changed your name. Um, cool. But I think you've got right. Well, thanks so much for having yeah. me on the show, and you guys are doing an amazing job, so keep it up. I'm loving it. Oh, well, thank you so much, and it's great to have a caller uh, from Down Under. I was dancing to that song the other night. Dancing? Oh. I come from a land down oh, under. Oh, I love that song. You know song. who I bumped into was... Phil from Pollenizer, who we met down there. Mm -hmm. He was here in L.A. Yeah, Phil from Pollenizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice guy. Smart guy. Uh, yeah. I like that guy. He gave yeah. a good presentation. I remember yeah. it. And He's a smart cat. Yeah. Um, he was at the David Seymour event here in town. Oh, is it David Seymour paying you now for no, plugs? No, no, no. It's, a bi it's the big Los Angeles event. The ah, I don't get Silicon invited Beach to it. Anyway. I don't get invited to it. I don't go to that stuff. But he invited me to come down to Australia. Oh, the beak's getting wet again. <laughs> so you're going to get flown and then you're, first class. And then Mark Pesci was like, oh, yeah, bring him. He, he, Phil went on Twitter. He's like, I'm th trying to get Tyler down to Australia. And Mark Pesci, within 10 seconds, says, get Jason oh, down get, there. No, he said, get Tyler down there. Oh, my God. See, <laughs> I used to get all these speaking invites. I used to get the first class I tickets know. all around the world. And now they I want you to come. They want you to come, I by know the way. They all do. I just don't have the time. I got to focus I know. on my projects. It's very time consuming. It takes a week of your uh, life. You people understand? don't realize that, yeah. Maybe we should do it. When, we, when uh, we relaunch this inside.com, I'll do it. You know what we have to do soon? Is Japan. go to Japan. Yeah, before, let's do it. before that guy dies. <laughs> we got to go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just before. F and do it. I know. Let's just F and do it. It's on. All right, let's do it. All right. Um, Hey, uh, you just do like a 24 hour trip. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> me, you, and Sherman. Yeah. Me, you, and Saga. All right, next caller. Next caller is uh, Demetrius. Hi, Jason. Demetrius, sorry. Uh, Canelo 
Canelopoulos. Canelopoulos? That's, o- that's almost right. Tell me here. Let me hear it. Canelopoulos. 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 Okay. Upa. Canis. What, um, what is your, ca- your... Are you in Greece? Are you in Athens? I'm, I'm from Greece and South Africa, but I live in Cyprus for the moment. Oh, rough life. Look, it's a very international thing. Very international episode here. You pe- and people don't realize it. The show is downloaded over 100,000 times. Now the YouTube videos are getting thousands of views. This show is blowing up. Ads sold out until the first quarter. I mean, we're gonna, basically, if you want to buy ads on the show, it's going to be the second quarter. And we're going to be doing some live shows in San Francisco. Big announcement about that coming up. Oh, no one's heard that yet, huh? Big announcement about that coming up. Live shows for free for my fans. Wow. For free. In the heart of uh, Soma. In San Francisco. Free. Boom. Thanks to a sponsor who's partnering with us. It's going to be pretty awesome. Hey, uh, you've got a question. Have you listened to the show for a long time, Demetrius? Demetrius? Well, you know, um, I just started listening in April. Okay. But I back I backwatch almost everything. Wow. Yeah, I think I only That's about 500 maybe. hours. Yep. No video. Yeah, but I did it. It's it's really amazing because we don't get such information uh, down here. So hmm. the information I've received, you know, is is exquisite. So oh well, that's great. It's really worth all the time. And do you have a favorite guest on the program? I always like to ask that question. Do you have a favorite guest? Obviously, Chris Saka was one of the best, but uh, I would say also Nolan Bushnell. Oh, that was a great um, episode. I really enjoyed that one. That was great for me because this person has a, a, a tremendous way of presenting the world, you know? And yeah, big vision. picture. Big vision, yeah. Big picture, yes. So it's, mm. it's amazing to, to listen to this person. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I have to say, like, Nolan and Chris are two great episodes. Okay, you have a question, uh, Dimitri. Let me hear it. Yeah, so um, we're a team of five, uh, three engineers, myself as a product, and we have a finance slash strategy guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working full-time on other jobs, but we decided to build a startup based on a very, very big problem we had after ditching three or four ideas for the last six months. Great. So we, decided, so we decided for many reasons that the best people to have on the board as advice and as maybe executive or non-executive would be you and Tyler. <laughs> and for many reasons. <laughs> yeah. That, that's for many reasons I can explain to you if you want. Sure. So basically, it's the honesty, okay, for the, for the product and the services you offer. It's, right. It's the complete honesty that you and Tyler have towards the audience. Yeah. And, of course, your advice and your experience in this, in this market. Right. So, to this extent, uh, my question would actually be, we are a team of five, and we have a great experience. We've been working in the corporate, corporate world for 15 years. I've been working for 12 years yeah. in very large banks. Um, how would we approach you or Tyler or both of you and present our startup uh, into a market which we want to launch, which yeah. is the U.S., and expand? Right. Since we don't have a track record, and yeah. to, to, to be honest, you don't know me. Right. It's so very simple. It's a great question. Um, so the question is generally, how do you, if you're outside the U.S., how do you court investors in the U.S.? Not just me or Tyler, but just anybody. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you're not in the U.S., you're not going to get taken as seriously by U.S. investors. Mm-hmm. But that's changed over the years because mm-hmm. we have seen some huge successes. And you see people like Sequoia have an office in Israel and in China mm-hmm. and in India. Right? And Sequoia, mm-hmm. they don't need to get on a plane to go anywhere. People come to them. They're the gold standard in yeah. venture capital. But they still have those regional offices, right? So they, they, they are moving around and looking at other opportunities. And they invested in a couple of companies in New York like... Um, Tumblr and others. So they, even the mighty Sequoia, you mm-hmm. know, like the, the gold standard that, you know, can just sit in their office and every entrepreneur will, rightfully so, pilgrimage to them, will, will go out there. But that's because people have to have track records and they have to have traction. So if you want to get attention of U.S. Uh, investors outside the U.S., you have to have a tremendous business. And it's, it's really unfair, but if you were in Silicon Valley with five people and a decent idea and a couple of good mock-ups, you're going to get meeting after meeting after meeting. If you're in Europe, 
and you've got 10 great employees, and you've got a better looking product, and you've got $25,000 a month in um, revenue, you're going to get 0. 0.0. Can I can I can, 0. I, can I just 0 say meeting. my experience? Yeah. Go ahead. So my experience, all of these two months that we are working on the product and we will be launching around January, is the only person that answered my email yep. was a was a couple of Greeks from Silicon Valley. Yep. And Alfred Lin yep. from Sequoia. Huh. Right. Which I was very surprised. Yeah. Now, if you if you account another twenty people that have answered e- that I've sent emails or called, which they haven't answered, obviously. Yep. This is what you get, and generally speaking, in Europe, nobody has answered me. No one. Not yeah. a single person. So. And, that's interesting. Yeah. Da- that's an interesting data point. I think I know Alfred pretty well. He's an entrepreneur. Obviously, helped build Props Zappos, Alfred, yeah. and um, it doesn't surprise me. They make a point of trying to get they back really to everybody do. and try to be professional that way. But even I mm-hmm. can't get back to everybody. So it's 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 really a signal of people are overwhelmed and they don't use their inbox as the signaling me- method. They use the people around them. So what you would have to do, um, just sort of getting to brass tacks here and how to make it happen. Um, number one. The more traction you have, the more paying customers, the more growth you have, the easier it is. And sending people an email doesn't mean anything. Sending them a three-month or four-month or five-month chart that shows some kind of growth, Mm -hmm. you just send that chart and say, we're growing. And then you do that again in three months, Mm -hmm. and you do it again in three months, and you look at it as a term project, Mm -hmm. not a week-by-week project. But you have to look at courting the Americans, uh, investors, and the powerful people in Silicon Valley as a quarterly as a year-long project and in that year-long project you have to send them four emails here's your quarterly update we've made this amount of progress and that would make them say in the mark suster who does this week in venture capital mark suster is a famous venture capitalist he says he doesn't invest in dots he invests in lines and what he means by that is he will meet people over a year and see them make progress and the dots are going up and then he draws a line. Okay, this person is trending in a certain way. If it's somebody he doesn't know. Now, if it's Mark Pincus or Evan Williams or Jack Dorsey who walk in the front door, they're going to just get a check and the VC is going to be thankful that they invested in whatever they are doing, whether it's a grilled cheese business or Medium or Twitter or Square or whatever it is. They're just going to throw that check. Mm -hmm. So I I think you have to be realistic about it. Go ahead. Basically, our startup... Uh, which is called grabapro.com, not yet functional. Grabapro.com, uh, s- com, but okay. it's not functional, Jason. Okay, yeah. no problem. Um, it's basically going to solve this problem. Oh, it's the problem of finding professional it, advisors? Exactly. Oh, wow. So it's this great. is a really interesting thing. He very asked meta. a question. Yeah. <laughs> very meta. My <laughs> mind, I feel like I just went into the matrix. So your yeah. question of how to find the professionals and get them involved in your startup, you're building a startup to solve that problem. That is a very clever way to market your startup is to do an Ask Jason sure. where I answer the question and your startup is also an answer to the question. So how do you think you're going to approach it? So we're Since you've hacked the show, I, I salute you for hacking the show. Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to create a unique experience of having customers seeking for advice from Quora, for example, and receiving results from Mahalo in person over the phone or video yeah, or one-on-one. Yeah, so so that's, that's the idea. Yeah. So it, we're going to... This is a good idea. Target. Experts exchange, Quora. Uh, people like to meet experts and they like to, you know. Clarity FM is kind of the new Clarity mover FM. in that one. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's trying to connect experts with um, people who need their information for a, yeah, a dollar Clarity amount. Clarity is, is the competition. Um, but the professional services market is a $4 trillion industry. So being third or second doesn't make really any difference. Execution makes the the difference. Correct. So we have uh, a pretty good idea on, because we want to generalize, Clarity only focuses on startups, but if you take people that work in other large companies and have the knowledge to share, or doctors, or lawyers, or whatever it is, that's more people than people that working at startups. So Mm -hmm. we are focusing on uh, a a major segment there. Yeah. And obviously, we're going we're gonna to build it through our professional network and move on there. Yeah, somebody so else did one question. that was a, uh, somebody did one that was a Quora of, um, 
a core of lawyers, kind of like mm -hmm. an expert of exchange yeah. of lawyers. So it's, the idea is out there. Um, listen, I, I got to get on to the next question, but uh, keep listening cool. and really uh, good questions and way to hack the show. <laughs> I always appreciate a good hack of the show. Um, and, uh, you know, all this great flawless Q&A that we're doing right here, right now in real time. And it just, it seems so smooth. And you think, I have a satellite truck, Hold right? Hold on, Jason. One other big tip for this guy. Yeah. I, not to interrupt. No, why not go. interrupt? No, but, you're, yeah. I, but seriously. Why not interrupt me? Your advice on the chart was really solid. Like, give them an update about the chart. And yeah. Real quick, because it's about the visual. They'll look at an image before they'll read your email, right? Absolutely. Too long didn't read. TLDR. Right. Keep keep the text to a minimum. One other clever hack you could do with that is make a little video that really describes what you do because they're likely, much more likely to watch a short little uh, video. Oh, yeah, and if the YouTube video is embedded in their Gmail or Google right. Docs account, they can just hit play. Right. And it's like, hey, uh, this is a message for uh, I Jason. wouldn't even do that. I'd just go into the product bit. What oh, it's right, about. right, right. Just do a screencast. <laughs> yes. Oh, so like, here's how our product works. Number one, you go yet. here. Number two, you do this. And we have clients like this one. And you make it like a 60-second video. Yes, make it idea. 60 seconds. But also know that you're going to be judged on the quality of that video. Yeah, it's got to be pretty tight. Make yeah. it high quality. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great little hack, too. I love the idea of a little video. I would definitely hit the video um, to take the tour. Hey, listen, all these uh, great uh, question and answers are coming not by a satellite truck, not by, you know, me having a remote with HD cameras, but with GoToMeeting. Meeting is believing. I use GoToMeeting all day. I use GoToMeeting for the Mahalo uh, Inside board meeting today, and it went flawlessly. At GoToMeeting, go ahead and thank at GoToMeeting uh, for providing a great service, hosted online meetings, uh, unlimited, one price a month, go to gotomeeting.com and try it free. Click uh, and use the promo code START, S-T-A-R-T, for a free 30-day trial. Citrix GoToMeeting is a wonderful product. I use it every day. And I logged in there and it's like, oh, you have your board meeting today and then you have this demo later in the day. Tomorrow you've got a demo with this startup. I just do it all the time. And then I flip back and forth. I give control of the demo to somebody who's... Um, on the other side of the call, and I can flip it between multiple participants. I got people calling in on their mobile phones. I got people on their computers doing VoIP. I got people in hotel rooms using headsets. You over their computer, it works and it's solid. And I use it because of the beautiful HD faces. I got two gorgeous HD cameras here from Logitech that are better than the kind of. I gotta tell you, Apple. I mean, it's kind of ghetto. This the cameras in the laptops got to be upgraded. I use the Logitech HD ones because I love HD faces, which is the wonderful feature that GoToMeeting uses. Go to meeting. Meeting is believing. Trust me. Meeting is believing. Citrix go to meeting is amazing. Go to gotomeeting.com and use the promo code START for a free 30-day trial. Thank you, Citrix go to meeting. Meeting is believing. Meeting is believing. Meeting is believing. I love that. It's a great tagline. All right. Speaking of meeting is believing, let's go to the next person. Meeting is believing on go to meeting, which is Greg. Greg, are you there? Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Great. Uh, really excited to talk to you. Uh, glad that you're wearing a suit and tie. That's very, very proper. Um, From the waist up, anyways. Yes, he could be totally, <laughs> totally pantsless, uh, but don't stand up. Uh, tell us, what is your question, and where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Okay, Washington, D.C., very good. It's a popular area this time of year, election season. Everybody's freaking out there. What is your question? My question is, um, I had a great idea for a mobile app uh, a few years ago, and it's, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, it's, it's one of these things that keeps you up at night. You wake up in the middle of the night, you write down stuff on paper. So I started to design it. I finished a great spec, uh, looked online, developed a few screens, you know, to sort of test the concept, at least with a few folks. And it's a taxi crab, uh, and, and it's a, it solves one specific very simple problem in one part of the country. You know, we're not trying to be Pinterest or Instagram. This is a unique problem in this area, and that's delivery of, of uh, certain types of food. Right. Um, so behind the scenes, it requires a lot of coding. So once I finished the spec, I would get proposals to build of just the minimum you know, via the MVP, you know, the Air Grease version. Yeah. T takes a lot of work. It's not. This is not a simple app. It's something right. that requires a lot of code. Of course. And so, so uh, you know, to get quotes for forty, fifty k just for the first version is something right. that's not going to happen. So, sure. you know, we're sort of stuck. And I wanted to know, uh, you know, how you might approach the problem. Sure. It. You know, and my question is, what comes first? Is it uh, seed funding for a product that doesn't exist, or is it 
you know, um, you know, build the thing no matter what before you try to get seed fund? Okay, this is a great question, and um, I have recent experience with it. Uh, you may have heard of the launch ticker project that I started, and that is now using a beautiful CMS content management system that we built. It took a couple of months to build, and obviously, you know, um, uh, you know, a decent amount of money not thirty, forty, fifty thousand, but you know, not much less. And we did that f maybe in the tenth week of the launch ticker. But for the first two months of the launch ticker, for those of you following it, we used a Google Doc. People were inside of a shared Google Doc, and it would break down, and you couldn't see how many people were in there. We had no ability to put chart beat in it, and it was, you know, there was all kinds of problems. And then we had to cut and paste it into MailChimp to send it. We didn't use the MailChimp API. There's no way to go from Google Docs to the MailChimp API, right? That's not easy. So we had to like save it as an HTML file. It was arduous. Luckily, Kieran did all the work, not me. Sassy Kieran, and uh, that worked out better for me. Um, however, once we realized people loved it and people were hanging out in the ticker and thousands of people were subscribing and $1,000 worth of subscriptions came in, we invested in making these, uh, a great developer named Jonas who's been ma in New York who's been making the launch ticker CMS. Now that comes out in week 10. Now we have more things we want to do and we're adding it. But and Path became a, um, an advertiser in the, um, in the ticker. So that's how I hacked it. Now, for your case, and I had this happen with New York Mouth. New York Mouth uh, is an investment of mine. They do um, they do um, artisanal foods. So, if you want to get uh, chocolates or whatever, there's all the or you know, here's a bag of uh, let's see, you can get here's Apple picking taster, Autumn in New York, tailgates, uh, pickles. So, let's say you're into pickles, right? They have all these artisanal pickles from different people. And these are all the different products they have and all the different makers. Look at all these makers. I'm so proud of them. New York Superfoods, P&H Soda, Rick's Picks. I mean, what is P&H Soda? I've never even heard of that. So anyway, one of the things I said to them was, you have to have a VIP concierge. And if you look right here, here is the VIP concierge, right? Because I said, I am so busy. I need to send a gift basket. Like I sent one to a friend of mine, James Brooks, right? Just to drop a name, James Brooks. He is the um, creator of The Simpsons. You might have seen their TV show. We're friends. We play poker. And I was telling him about the service and some of the things. He goes, that's really interesting. I said, yeah, well, give me your address. I, and I just emailed VIP at New York Math. So now they have, and we were talking about doing a VIP concierge service. How do we do this? What's the minimal viable product? I said, for me, I want something I re can remember, use for my BlackBerry, use for my iPhone, use for my desktop, wherever I am. It's like, oh, well, we got to do an app, we got to do a website, we got to do a membership, you got to log in. I was like, too complicated. You know I have email. Let me just email you what I want. So now, I'll, 1 o'clock in the morning at a poker table, I email, send a $75 gift bag to James Brooks at this address. And they send it to him. And that's it. They have my credit card on file. They didn't build any software. By the way, this has become one of the most popular features on the site. People are doing their gift baskets. VIP people, baller people are just like, send a $200 gift basket to this person. Send $100 to this person. I trust your judgment. Craig Canarick, the founder of co-founder of Razor Fishers, launched New York Mouth, came up with this genius idea and I invested in it. But that was our way of doing private gifting, corporate gifting, and corporate snacking. Just email VIP concierge. We know who you are. Yeah. Right? So I think in your case, Greg, if you're doing this delivery service, what is the minimal viable way that somebody could interact with you? Twitter, email, who knows, a voicemail service that then gets transcribed, whatever it is, you could do it with one restaurant or five restaurants just with that email system, just with some simple hack to see if people want to order from those restaurants even, and if you can build a relationship with those restaurants, and if the delivery works, all that kind of stuff. So. And you did this too, Tyler, in your you, business. I'm surprised you remembered. I did do this. So explain how you did your minimal viable product. If you don't know what minimal viable product is, it's a concept of what is the simplest, and it's by Eric uh, Reese and um, Steve Blank, uh, and you can buy Eric Reese's uh, app, uh, ericreeseapp.com. Um, beautiful app. Beautiful app that I created uh, <laughs> with Eric. Um, but go to Eric Reese app, R-I-E-S, and you can buy this app for like All nothing. All buys aside, though, it's a beautiful app. It's a beautiful app. All buys aside. Um, but anyway, you can buy the iBook. It's really beautiful. And... Um, you'll, uh, you'll get all his stuff. It's a, it's a really good course. Anyway, yeah. um, minimal viable minimal product viable is product. the minimal you, you, product to solve a, and answer a specific question. Right. And there are usually ways, if you get creative, to do this without investing any cash and Correct. without writing very, very, very little code. What was your hack? My particular hack was not so different from the one you just described, 
where early on I wanted to provide a way so that when you had a bad experience mm-hmm. at a restaurant or a hotel or somewhere, yep. to without having to do anything, to talk to the manager. Gotcha. Right from your phone. Got it. So I told Mark Suster and a few friends, hey, next time you're out eating at a nice restaurant, do me a favor and, you're, and you have a problem, just send an email to the name of the restaurant yep. at squeal.com, which was my handle and I had a catch all so I'd catch all of these and when the front end of the email would tell me where they were right got it so they would say red lobster santa monica at squeal.com I would get the email got it what a hack call up red lobster and say hey do you have a customer who's in your store right now who just ordered the whatever and it's not cooked properly right and of course they're a little freaked out but this is what uh, I think is called internally as artificial artificial intelligence <laughs> artificial Artificial. artificial, artificial intelligence. Right. You're, you're doing a manual process that most people think is automated. Right. And they can't figure out how you're doing it. You're right. doing it mechanically. You're doing right. it the hard way for the time being. Yeah. And there's no better way to do it because you really get in your... It your, makes it raw. It, it, you, it you, strips you live away it. all the noise. Yeah. So you can't sit there and argue about the features or the colors or the links. It's like VIP at New York Mouth. Send in your order. They'll interact with you. There's no debating or whatever. Either the email comes from the customer and they want to send a gift package or they don't. That's it. Mm -hmm. And in your case, people loved it. I mean, Mark, I mean, it got to a point. I love that. I was telling people like, you don't tell people about this. Right. Because they wanted to start telling their friends like, hey, if you have any problem, just send this email to this. it's expensive because it costs you $10 to call it $25 to call each restaurant or whatever. Exactly. But it's incredible service. So if you can make that work, and in this case, it works for them because they're making 20 bucks on this gift basket. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. So in his case, he might as well. If, and the thing about gift basket people is, if you have a gift basket, if you're a gift basket kind of person, like I send 150 gift baskets, gift baskets at Christmas, 100 after yep. the launch event. Those yeah. are 75 times uh, 100, 7,500 bucks. Uh-huh. This is this is serious cheddar. Anyway, so what exactly Literally. is your idea again? Let me let me let me hear <laughs> the. No, I, I it was food delivery for a specific type of food. So what type of food and why is that unique? Uh, have you been to D.C. or Maryland, Baltimore? I'm sure you have. Yeah. Okay. So, it, in, your, in your experience coming to this area, in the summertime, uh, there's one thing that people order uh, constantly during the spring to late fall, um, you know, right around the end of baseball season, and they eat it almost exclusively at home. Do you know what that is? Ice cream? Steam, steam crabs. Steam crabs. You know the Maryland steam crabs? Sure, of course. Right, so everyone orders them at home, right? And everyone gets in their car and they drive around. And they stand in line in their flip flops and they stand at these takeout places and they put them in a bag and they drive them back home and they sure. eat them while they're still hot. So, <clears throat> the Taxi Crab app is designed to sort of do three things. One is allows the customer to sit sit at home in their shorts, you know, in their backyard, and and uh, find a delivery driver that picks up the place where they prefer to get them and ring the doorbell. For the drivers, and we have spoke to several kids who want to help us test as drivers, it's great for them because they check in and check out when they want and where they want. So one weekend it could be at the parents' house because they're on a school break. Yeah, no, I get it. Okay. So it's Uber for bringing crabs. Okay. Um, Uber Uber combined with, I would say, um, Grubhub. uh, Hotel hotel Tonight, which which has a lot of algorithms about up-to-date pricing and stuff on the back. Right. So this would be perfectly suited for a Twitter account so or an email or both. So let's say um, you get a Twitter account and it's like, uh, I don't know, um, you know, get crabs or something. Well, that would probably be bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah. what you do is you people be, it becomes a phenomenon. You do a little PR around it and you say, you know, um, we have 10 crabs ready to go. Who wants them? Right? <laughs> That's your marketing. Got crabs. Right? Got crabs. Got crabs. Get but crabs. Got crabs. Like milk? Yeah. Yeah, got crabs. Um, or crabs oh, now. Oh right? Goodness. And you just, you get uh, 10 of these crab shacks, and you post, uh, or you have them post, when they have crabs ready and how many. They take a picture of it. They Instagram or whatever. So they're showing their inventory. And then people who want it just reply that they want it. Then you direct message the person back if they follow the account. Where are you? They direct message you back. And it's crabs over Twitter. It's Twitter crabs. Right? And that's how you test it. And you get one local. You get a, and you have them put a, You do what Tyler did. You put up little signs. Tweet us. 
to get crabs. We'll deliver them to you. Just tweet to us. Um, and then you say, okay, what's your phone number? What's your email? Whatever. And you just run it manually. Yeah. And you see if you can get anybody to do it and how many times they do it. And so on the weekends, we, have, we deliver crabs. Boom. That's it. And then you just call a car service and tell the car service to pick it up, drop it off. Boom. And you could do the minimal viable product. And then you got to figure out what is the margin on this. How much will people pay to have because, the crabs well, at delivered? Well, least, at least now what you can start doing in the lean startup methodology is start running ads against it. Find out how many people... You could collect a credit card at the beginning of this if you really sure. wanted to. You see, I think that's why email is so great. You know, if, right. they, if, they, if they tweet the pictures, who wants these? Just coming out of the oven, and then somebody replies back, I'll take them. Right. Then you just say, great, email us here. Right. Email us your credit card too, boom. Yeah, and but deliver location. A lot of what Lean is about is testing an idea before you build it in the sense that yeah. you build a landing page. Well, this is to see if people want the crabs delivered. Right. And will they pay? And what is and the how question? how much will they pay? Right. How much will they pay is the question. So that's what you really want to test, Greg, is will they pay 10 or 20 right. bucks or 2 bucks a crab or $20 to get crabs delivered? Right. So it's your How much would pay, you pay to get crabs? <laughs> <laughs> How much did you pay to get crabs? Oh, geez. We're not going there. Okay. But, uh, yeah. All right, Greg, does that make sense, Lean Startup-wise? It does, Jason. I appreciate it. And uh, one final thought. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Twist List member. And, oh, good. And, uh, and, and, and now the launch ticker. Great. Um, my favorite episode was probably David, David Hansen from uh, 37 Signals. Sure, he was great. He's going to come back on this year. He's, uh, hey, Kieran, make a note that David did say he would be here in the spring and wants to be on again. And uh, I got to shake hands and chat briefly with Elon Musk yes. here in D.C., who was at an event, and I really pimped your show. I mean, Good. I told him you. Awesome. I told him you were the you were the Oprah of startups. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I saw him uh, just this weekend. Um, awesome. Okay, well, we'll uh, talk soon, and thank you for uh, pimping out. Uh, to Elon Musk. That's just where he needs. He's getting harassed everywhere yeah. he goes by the super fans. Sure I like the super fans yeah. being a little harassing, though. I kind of yeah. like that. Like, I think I feel like the super fan should just like. Every time they meet somebody who's like an entrepreneur, they should just be like, "Why aren't you? Why won't you go on Jason's show?" Like, you should just be irate. Yeah. Like, but even with like my friends, like Alonzo friends, be like, yeah. "But you, you, you're not going to come on Jason's show. Why won't you go on Jason's show? I want an answer right now." Like, they should get like really not like don't get violent, but they, they should be really like perplexed and upset about it. Like, why can't I? When are you going to be on the show? Like, be like with Kim Jong with uh, Kim uh, dot com, not Kim Jong Il, Kim dot com. Where is Kim dot com? I want Kim dot com on the episode. program. I want him live. Is he allowed in the United States? He probably won't come to the United States because they raided his house. They they put wireless like they they tapped him and raided his house with no. It'd be like raiding Dropbox's house. It's amazing that whole case was oh, really. He's got them dead to rights. Next caller, Walter Wood. Are you there? Who's that? Who? What's your name? That's a good looking guy. I'll take him. Who's that guy? It's either Dane or Walter. I think his mom just came in the room. Mom! Mom, I'm on this week at startups, Mom! <laughs> Don't interrupt me. Oh, this is just a question that I'm supposed to read. Okay, here we go. Walter Wood is a student from the University of Tulsa. And he says, I'm a college student studying finance and learning to code, trying to have a, as diverse a skill set as possible. I'm in my junior year and very interested in working in startups and venture capital. Would you advise trying to start a small company with like-minded people or trying to join a team with an existing startup to get into the scene? Also, does location play a huge role in getting to the startup scene? Okay, number one, yes. Location, location, location. If you want to start be in the internet business, immediately leave Tulsa. Run. Do not walk. <laughs> Sorry, people of Tulsa. You need to run like a melon farmer to Silicon Valley, <laughs> Los <farmer>. Angeles, <laughs> New York, Maybe Austin, say, maybe not, not, Chicago, not maybe Austin. Seattle. But basically, the Valley, Los Angeles, or New York are your three top choices. And yeah, that's it. That's where the startups oh, are. Boulder's good. Boulder, actually, if, no, I put Boulder right, I put Boulder right up there with those four because yeah. you know what? It's dense. Especially, and they're very helpful, Boulder. Especially if you're into coding. Exactly. Boulder's a really good choice, actually, yeah. for somebody up and coming because the people in Boulder are all so smart yeah. and they're also yeah. helpful. Very embracing, yeah. Friendly. They embrace everybody. It's a bunch of hippies over there. <laughs> it's like everybody you go. It's all like, that clean spring water they're drinking. I don't know there. what it is with the people of Boulder, but it's like the, you go to Boulder and it's like. You know, it's like 10 o'clock on Sunday, and you're going to brunch, and it's like, yeah, I just did yoga, and then I did a triathlon, and um, I read the New York Times cover to cover, and I just did meditation, and I did my acne puncture, and now I'm going to eat some steamed uh, broccoli. And you're like, it's 10 o'clock. 
I just drank my third cup of coffee and I'm still asleep. What is wrong with you people of Boulder? They're also like, every, oh yeah, no, I got a double, I got, a, I got my MBA from Harvard, and then I got a double PhD in molecular biology and philosophy. I, and uh, yeah, then I sold my I mean, company, but, but I was climbing Mount Everest when I sold it and the satellite phone went out. It's because and you're like, what? These people are all like superhumans. Like Brad Feld, interestingly, runs, uh, you know, he's these incredi- in Alaska. He's in Venice. Incredibly in- long, these he- marathons. He does runs. ultra marathons. Yeah, and everybody's a superhero in Boulder. Yeah, it's amazing. So anyway, the, the answer is, uh, pull the put the Tulsa, the Tulsa question back up, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so the his uh, the startup scene does matter, and then on the question of joining or starting. Um, if you're a developer, uh, you can make your own thing, but generally it's kind of lonely to do that. I would get two or three people together, or I would look, I would really become a great developer, great front-end developer, back-end developer, whatever. Get those skills really tight, or be in user interface and design, get those skills really tight. Those are the two most in demand. Uh, and then I would join a company in Boulder. Or, or Techstars, or awesome. New York, or Seattle, any of those tech stars programs, Founders Institute wouldn't be bad either. You'll learn some stuff there. But Founders Institute, you sort of join and then you try to create a company while you're there. So that's right. not bad. Um, you're not going to get into venture capital. So I'd leave that off the table. Your venture capital slots are limited to, you know, old boys network. Like, did you go to, you know, who was your roommate at Harvard Business School? Like, mm-hmm. maybe you get into venture capital or successful entrepreneurs. So you, unless you have the ability to go to Harvard Business School, Stanford Business School, uh, or your brother's cousin who you play polo with at the, you know, whatever club, you know, know somebody at some venture firm, you're not getting in unless you have a big track record or, or you know somebody. So skip that. But uh, make your bones in a, these incubators and accelerators are incredible. In L.A., we have six of them. And let me tell you, you just go to the accelerator and say, I'm a developer. Can I just sit here? They'll be like, yeah, sit right there and wait and then look. I would go, this is what I would do. If I would get my skill up, go to one of those places and say, can I tour all the startups and then pick which one I join? They'd be like, oh, you know how to code? Yes. LA would not be bad right now because there, oh, so, oh, there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of good startups at, with a bunch of good incubators and they could use more developers. So You need to have skill and you need to have hard work. Yeah. You know, that's the key thing. I um, I'm always shocked at the number of people who want to work like 35 hours a week, 40 hours a week. They don't want to put in even 50 hours a week or 60 hours. Like They're like, ah, I don't really want to work 50 or 60 hours a week. It's like, well, then you shouldn't really be at a startup company. What are you doing there? Like, get out of the startup company. Like, if you want to work 30, 40 hours a week, like, go to the post office, go to wherever. I mean, people in the post office probably work harder than 30 hours a week. Mm-hmm. But you got to be at a different type of place. Yeah. yeah. Basically, if you want to work 30, it. Yeah. If, you're, if you want to work 35, 40 hours a week, you probably, there's probably no place left for you in the, you know, world because the world's so competitive. Sweden. You go to Sweden. I know you could go to Sweden where it's just like all lifestyle based. <laughs> or Portland or somewhere like that. Yeah, maybe some of those places, but then the, you have to really have a great job if you want to have that kind of balance in your life. And those you have to have a really great skill. You gotta refine your skills. I have to, I have to retract and my work comment your, about Sweden. They actually have a really good startup community there. I know that. I'm just saying just in terms of work ethic. Yeah. You need to have a tremendous work ethic to make it in the world today, I think. And you have Especially to in technology. Skill. Skill and work ethic. Skill and work ethic. And the, they don't seem to teach either of those skills in school. There's nobody teaching work ethic and there's nobody teaching skills. Everything is like, what do you want to do to fulfill yourself and your dreams and your hopes? And nobody wants to learn a goddamn craft anymore and be good at something. How about you shut up, you put your head down, and you learn how to use a goddamn hammer or a, or a sickle or a, a, you know, something and have some craftman, craftsmanship to what you do. That's what the world needs. The world doesn't need to fulfill your self-indulgent nonsense about, you know, you want to save the world or the whales or what. Save yourself and get a goddamn skill, people. What's wrong with you people? The world is going to leave you behind, chew you up, and spit you out if you don't have any skills. Literally, it's getting more and more competitive. This is the world's competition, and this is you. What do you think is going to happen? If you're just maintaining your skill level, like the last time you did something interesting or learned something was like sophomore year in college or something, you need to constantly be on the skill, increasing your skills. I am, I'm, I'm 41 goddamn years old. And I made my money. I don't even need to be here. <laughs> and I'm still trying to get better at what I do. I'm studying Howard Stern. I'm studying Charlie Rose. I'm studying how to be a great interviewer. And the Chris Sacco was like, 
finally I did it. You know, I feel very proud of myself that I was, I was able to get out of the way and do a good interview. And Saka said to me, like, you're the best interview I ever had. I was like, my, like, my heart just like bubbled up, like, oh my God, I'm getting better as an interviewer. I'm trying to be better at what I do. And these goddamn people out there in the world, they don't want to get better, and then they want more rewards. They want a goddamn private jet, but they don't want to increase their skill level. Put your head down and get better at a skill, people. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to go crazy on people, but I'm literally dealing with this every day of my life. Yeah. Every day of my life, I meet people. And I literally, I can't take it anymore. And you know, I don't even say it to people anymore. I just have people who say it to people, or I just, I just like, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then I walk away and I just shake my head and go, that person is going to be dog meat. Like, literally, when they cut up all the prime cuts, they take all the scraps, you know, the ugly, disgusting scraps, and they grind them up, and they feed them to the dogs or to the pigs. Yeah. That's what these people are going to be in society. They're just scraps. Do you They're think, scraps. They don't have this. any skill and no desire to work hard. But let me ask you something. The, uh, Francisco Dow wrote a really good post on this point recently, yeah. which is, is it because, and I think it was in Pando Daily, by the way, is it because... Uh, as a society here, like especially in technology, there's a there's a recent trend of not telling people when they're doing something wrong. Of course there that's, is. That's, Everybody's scared to death of telling somebody you suck. Right. Because, oh, my God, I'm going to lose a developer. Oh, my God, I'm going to lose somebody. Right. You know what? When I raise the standards at my companies, and recently I did do that at Mahalo, mm -hmm. I raised the yep. standard because I wanted Big to make time. the content better. Yep. We, just, we did one thing. We set a start time of 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock for different groups. Once we did that, like three people quit. Yeah, And I was like, oh, well, if you don't appreciate the job enough to get in here at 8 o'clock and do it, and you don't have that discipline and to be an Olympic caliber person, great, quit. You know, I don't mean to be a Nazi about right. it, but, you know, it is a tell. You know, if you don't want to commit to working hard and being consistent, like, I do the show three times a goddamn week, and I think about my performance. I listen to my past performances. I try to get but better at it. Separate from that, if when people have ideas, yeah. right? The guy with the crab idea. Right. Should should we be should this our cult the, should the startup culture in America be a little more forthcoming about saying that's a bad idea because in England they kind of do it to a fault right like, oh yeah they the, just they crush every dream. I don't right. think that his idea is amazing right but I do think it will lead him to an amazing idea eventually if he gets some kind of traction right so maybe people do want those delivered but maybe the business is there's 20 different artisanal foods that you can charge a premium for, and he's gonna deliver them in packages, and you're gonna get all 10 artesian foods, and it's a $500 ticket item, or maybe he'll go into private care. There might be something that he'll learn in that process. And also the process of getting one project off the ground is a great way to get the next project off the ground. That's yeah. how we all start in this world. But, but I, uh, so I don't wanna tell him it's a terrible idea, right? and he's an up-and-comer, yeah. but I do think that he needed to hear that like, hey, Let's stop crying about it because there is a minimal viable product here. Email, right. Twitter, I mean, right, right, a right. phone number. Right. Create an 800 number. 800 get crabs. Right. Got crabs. I gave him the idea. 800 got crabs or get crabs. You gave me the got crabs. I did get crabs. Yeah. That's a double entendre. It's hysterical. It's memorable. And if people, like guys who are drunk at a frat party yeah. or in a bar be like, hey, you got crabs? Yeah, you never know got crabs? Yeah, watch this. I'm going to order crabs right effing now. Right. And they'll put $200 on their credit card when they're drunk at 2 in the morning and they'll get the crabs and they'll be like, got crabs, get it? Ha oh, ha, oh, crabs. Oh, on your balls, you have crabs. <sighs> next caller, please. Who's the next caller? <laughs> uh, hey, this is, this how you doing? You, me on? you are on. Who is this? Dane Whitbeck down here. Ah, oh, Dane, Texas. how you doing? Where are you from, Dane? Doing well. You know, we're working really hard down here, so there's still hope for America, Jason. Don't worry about it. <laughs> America is effed. Ugh, so royally effed. This country is yeah. going down the tube so fast. Well, our company is doing what we can to uh, make sure we're working uh, long weeks, long days, make sure we get this product. Yeah, work uh, smart, I, no doubt. You know, it's not the number of hours, it's the amount of, of output, but usually there's a correlation. So, Dane, what is your question? We're running out of time. Here, we got to get going. Okay, what's your yeah, question? sure. So just a brief background. So we started a company in uh, 2010 around energy management. So it's an Internet of Things company. It connects thermostats, wireless temperature sensors. Love it. Uh, boiler controllers, if you're in that type of building. Okay, to love give it. You, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, to give you more efficient uh, use of your either heating fuel or electricity. 
And uh, we started building that vertical market, and uh, we have you know over 20 buildings in New York City and New Jersey that use that solution. Over 2,000 households that rely on it for their heating in the winter, and um, you know we we're really happy about that. But around May of this year, we just couldn't shake the idea that we had something you know bigger in mind, uh, even better. And that idea was sort of a platform play, one where we could internet enable a lot of different devices um, that need a lot of similar features. Um, for example, giving a rules-based notification engine, um, giving charts and graphs based on any kind of data that's coming in. So we started working on that platform play, and we've uh, got it going pretty well now. We've got a lot of interest in it. And um, now we sort of have this problem because we're building two companies. We have our energy management vertical that is on top of our platform, and we have the platform company that's a separate company. And as I pictured those two companies at scale, they look very, very different. Great. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to do there. Okay. This is uh, what we call a high-class problem. Yep. It happens all the time. Yep. You uh, become good at one thing, and then you find another idea that's even better. High-class problem, right? We had, before, Greg was on talking about his crab thing. He hasn't even gotten that off the ground. And here you are with two viable businesses that you love. One is energy, you know, people using the energy management platform, and one is building out this yeah. Internet of Things platform. This is not uncommon, by the way. It happens all the time. And by the way, it happens, and then people spin it out. So there was a company called Vignette. CNET was, uh, you know, going to be a content site on the web. They needed a content publishing platform. Nobody had a good one. They made one. Then they realized, wow, this is really good. Other people want to use our platform. Other people started using the platform. Then they realized, hey, we got all these people who want to use our platform to build their websites. This is in the 90s. And then we have our content business. One requires enterprise salespeople and software people. One requires journalists and media salespeople. And how do we run this? And they have different margins. They spun Vignette out. They took it public. It made a sugar ton of money. That's what you need to do. You need to sell the services business and then have just a platform business. Or you need to put somebody in charge of each business, have two different business units under the same startup, and then have different PLs and maybe even different offices. And you know, maybe they just collaborate once in a while, but that's going to be hard. And a lot of times people spin out the services side of their businesses. And then when they get really big, then they buy services businesses to add them to software businesses. So actually, down the road, software and services is a nice combination. Um, but you may need to have a general manager for each. So like Oracle and IBM, they'll sell software and they'll sell solutions, right? They'll sell, so this is a pretty common thing. Um, and so, so to, to be clear, we our uh, energy management platform, we don't technically do the services on it either. Um, so we're, we're doing the technology back in there as well. So, so it's basically uh, two platforms. Well, uh, in, in that vertical market, it's not so flexible that I'd call it a platform, but it solves a problem technologically. Yeah. Technologically, um, and so, but other people, you know, distributors and service people um, are out there servicing these buildings and working with us on that, on yeah. that product um, in that vertical. So, um, but you don't yeah, think so, it's so, ever going to become a huge business? Is the issue? It's not, I guess, not big enough. <laughs> It'll Good. be big. I think it could be big, but maybe not, maybe not big enough. Uh, you know, this is a serious, so like, board level, founder level discussion that it would be very hard for us to come up with a definitive answer. But what I can, I can give you is what you need to think about when making the decision. And one is, which business are you going to enjoy going to work every day and building more? Which one do you have more passion for? Because... If you, do, if you clearly have more passion for this uh, platform play, then if you do the other one, it's always going to be the stepchild, the ugly stepchild that you don't love enough. Better to have somebody with no kids adopt that one and just love that kid as much as they can, and then you focus on your baby. It, it, that's the sort of situation you're in. It's like, I think you might want to let this one go to pasture or wind it down or let whoever the person is who has the passion in the organization spin it out you guys keep 20% dummy insurance equity in it or something or over the you know over a 5 year cliff they get to vest you know some significant amount of equity in it and you get to get your money out of it to fund the other business some some glide what what I would call a glide path or something like that but you have to pick this based on the founder and the founding team's passion which idea do you have the most passion for that's going to lead you to the right answer. Right now, it seems like you have more passion for this platform play. You don't have passion for the other thing, and serve it. You know, so that, that's how I would make the decision. Tyler, you have any thoughts? And I was kind of surprised that you did come to the passion thing. That's what I was waiting to say. Yeah. But um, 
So we have the same advice there, which is, um, and it's uh, it's a Steve Jobs uh, kind of line where it's going to be very, very hard, whichever one you do. And, and you have this point as well, which is they're going to be equally hard. Yeah. You're going to put your 100% of yourself into either of them. Sure. So, so pick something big. Pick the one that's big and... And passion. And you got to do something that you're passionate Swing about. Swing for the fences. Go for the thing you're passionate about. Um, you only get one... Uh, what's the hashtag now? Uh, you only live once? Yes. Y-O-L... Oh. Yo, Y-O-L-O. YOLO. Yeah. YOLO? Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of the kids are saying that. YOLO. You only live once. So do the thing you're most passionate about. Swing for the fences. And, you, and you're going to do just fine. Um, and you got to wind the other one down. Find somebody who loves doing it. You Open source it is another thing people do. Like, hey, we don't want this project to die, but we open sourced it. Well, is, that, is that what you're thinking, Dane? Well, open source doesn't, doesn't work too well for this. Yeah. Um, it needs, it needs uh, love and attention from somebody who can train people, um, you know, how to go out and install these buildings, how to maintain them. Um, I don't think that's going to work well in an open source play for, uh, the, for the energy management. Can vertical. you spin those people out, though? Do you have two or three employees who you could spin out who would want to take it on as their own company, and you can have a little bit of upside yeah. in it, and they can take the majority of the upside? Yeah, you know, and that's that's a really interesting uh, point that you bring up there. And I've I've imagined uh, one path we could take, which is similar to a company, you know, really well science, where we make our core business building these verticals and um, and finding the right people to run them, and um, finding the you know the best opportunities within the Internet of Things for our platform. Yeah, that's a great um, idea. Yeah, um, it gives you because a lot of times when people have platforms, they can't find people to actually build on the platforms. They got to jumpstart the platform, and so you're, what you're doing there is you're jumpstarting the platform. You're saying, "Hey, here's, you know, a use case for the platform, these energy, you know, aware buildings, but we don't have the time to run it, and you'll spend more time on it and focus on it. So go take this business and run with it. Just make sure you pay us back, you know, something for our trouble." And uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, all right. Hey, so could I, could, could I yep. get one sneaky follow-up question? Sure, of course. Do you have any Do you have any advice on the um, on which which uh, venture capital firms or, or investors are most interested in the Internet of Things? Who you've seen been successful and have experience in Internet of Things? That's a good question. Who would be interested in the Internet of Things? It's really who's going to be interested in networks, right? So I think somebody who had experience previously with networks would be somebody I would think would be interested. Mm -hmm. So what is a networked device? But at the same time, those people are usually very critical because they have domain expertise in that area. That's true, but they might be critical and successful. So right. that's what you want in yeah, some yeah, cases. Yeah. So it, th that's a double-edged sword, right? There yeah. could be a little bit of a headache. Just be prepared for the... the... Yeah, of course. They're going to be super critical, whatever. So um, they might have some bias, right? But mm -hmm. So I would say, who invested in what network device that became very popular? Wi-Fi. Uh, Linksys, right? That was a network, right? So mm -hmm. uh, somebody who invested in Sonos, who was the investor in Sonos, uh, or Questron, you know, the home automation systems, people are like, oh, that's an internet yeah. of things. Those are things that ping back to a server. Yep. Somebody who actually invested in a network management company, like one of the, you know, network server management companies might look and say, oh, yeah, people paid money, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to monitor all these servers. Corporations did. Well, corporations are individuals. Individuals are corporations. S sort of inter you know, interchangeable you know, on a conceptual basis. Countries, companies, individuals. So individuals might have a network of things, or families might have networks of things that they want to manage. Their refrigerator, toaster, their pool. You know, how do we... Uh, the, the people who do network management would understand this analogy, and they might have gotten rich, and now they're building this 20,000 square foot, 10,000 square foot mausoleum slash home tribute to themselves... And they want to put this, you know, nonsense in their house and know when their toaster oven is burning the toast, right? So you get somebody who's like, you know, calling in rich and has, the reason they called in rich was because they invested in a networking company. So I would be looking to the networking companies. That, that would be where I would go because those people would start to get it. And they've probably put in a Questron system. system. They might have a pool that's self-aware. They might have, you know, apps on their phone to look at, like I have the apps to look at the video, of the security cameras at Mahalo or at my house. You know, I have eight security mm -hmm. cameras at my house. I can look at them at any time. I'm in bed looking at my iPhone, making sure nobody's jumping over the fence. The dogs will bite their leg off, you know. Um, and so those people are going to just get it. You're going to just get naturally that, oh, yeah, all things should be interconnected, and they're going to have some relationship. And I love this concept of if Internet-enabled device does X, 
other internet device does Y, or if X happens on the internet, Y happens with this connected right. device. So if weather is rain, then windows close. If, you know, so if forecast is snow, mm -hmm. then driveway heater uh, floor, you know, some people have in their driveways mm -hmm. the Radiant heat, yeah. driveway radiant heat goes on. So if the forecast is for snow, the radiant heat in the driveway goes on. It's such a crazy, brilliant idea. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, like, that's a great one, yeah. Isn't that a, great, that's, a really good idea? This is your idea? That kind of stuff that our platform makes really easy to do. That is a really genius idea. I really love what you're doing. I mean, If, I, if it's really mobile-driven from an interface standpoint, yeah. then things like Qualcomm Ventures and things like that, they love stuff like that. That's true, too. So Intel, Qualcomm... Um, and Cisco, they love the idea of more things being networked in the world, and they would look at investing in you as a way to just do a little bit of R and D. They might give you five dimes, mm -hmm. you know, you know, five high societies. I'm going to start calling five high societies equals five million. <laughs> ten dimes is ten thousand. I'm not going to call high society ten. Okay. No, they may give you five hundred high societies. It's too much. What would we call like a? Maybe we'll call a. You know, what we'll call a million a chamath. We'll give you five chamats. <laughs> they might give you five chamats. We'll take it. It's the new currency. We'll take it. You have, you have dimes, which is a thousand, right? Five dimes is five thousand. Mm -hmm. You have high societies, ten. Mm -hmm. Cranberry is twenty-five, and a chamat is a million. Because he went into the one drop, right? The million-dollar poker tournament. Funny. So let's call a million. You might be able to get two or three chamats out of Intel, um, because they just want to have more network devices out there. Yeah, but I love your idea. God, that's a good idea. With this similar. Uh, the 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 folks that got. When are you going to launch that thing, the Internet of Things? When do you think that's going to come out? So so we're going to be doing a big a big uh, promo push here at Startup Weekend in Houston on November 9th where we're going to Internet enable a new device in 48 hours. And right, here's what I want you to do. Promo video. Listen, yeah. listen to me. Be careful with your intellectual property on that. One. Listen to, list everybody stop for a second. You have listen. to get people into your team at Startup Weekend. Did I not say listen to me? Uh, I'm listening. Listen to me, Dane. The launch conference is the first week in March. I am charging you with launching something spectacular on my stage. In order for it to launch on my stage, it's going to have to be brilliant. So you'll be in the 2.0 competition. And that means you need to get to work now. And you need to think about what would wow the audience and how you're going to make this and how you're going to win hundreds of thousands of dollars in investment live on my stage. That's it. I like it. I like it. I like you're going to so be I on like, stage. Like I want to see thing. progress. Yeah, and the deal is you have to launch on stage, right? No launching prior to that? No launching prior. This has to be secret. So you have to build something in stealth. Nobody, no All press right. can see it. But on stage, I want you to wow. I'll have Chris Saka as a judge. I'll have Evan Williams as a judge. I'll have George Zachary as a judge. Mike Arrington as a judge. Cyan Bannister as a judge. Well, maybe not the Arrington. We'll see. That'd I invited be, him last year. That'd be fun. That'd be funny, huh? Yeah. He'll never do it. So, so uh, can, I, can I go ahead and get an invite right now, and we'll hold off on the launch until that date? You, listen, if it's great, I'm going to guarantee you a spot. But it's got to be great, OK? So it's contingent on greatness. And you know my email. Well, it's great. I can tell you that. All right. We'll it's got to look it. great, though. The design has to be there. You have to show my judges, and that you have to have concept and design. Execution has to be there as well. So keep it tight. I'm going to ping you soon. All right. I'll you soon and you'll see it. Okay. All right. You send me the secret mocks. You are, I am under friend DA. You just put me under friend DA. That's a friend DA. Let's try to raise a couple chamats for you. Listen, thank you at stamps.com for making uh, a great product. Everybody go to stamps.com. Use Click the microphone. Use the code TWIST. Um, really great guys over there. Great gals over there. I really appreciate you guys. They've, those guys have been making that product for over 10 years. And, and they do a great job. Love you guys over at Stamps. Dot com. And to my friends at GoToMeeting, meeting is believing. Thank you, Citrix, for all your support. Um, and I mean, Citrix is now, along with MailChimp, becoming like one of the longest running um, sponsors of this program. And you really, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to thank at GoToMeeting and thank at Stamps.com on your Twitter account. Really thanking the sponsors really makes them renew their contracts. And they renew their contracts, then we can do better shows and more shows. We need these partners. And these partners are backing the program to the tune of almost seven figures a year. Almost to a million dollars in revenue for this show. And that's why the production value keeps going up. We get to spend more money on microphones, compressors. The audience really drives the uh, The audience of the show. is driving the show now. It's out of control. And here I was going to retire. You guys pulled me back in. I love it. 
I'm recharged after the SOC interview. That's the, the whole launch conference thing is starting to ramp up already. Oh, right? man, we're starting to sell out. Speaking it's of which, be... uh, there was in the news today, Cabana, who, Cabana, launched, who got... launched at the uh, year four um, launch conference year one. They were just acquired by Twitter yeah. today. Yeah, I guess it's an Accu hire, so it yeah. sounds like a single or a double, but good for them. I was, I'm was i a little angel investor in that. Oh, you got your so beak wet? No beak wet is going Did on. Did you there. put cash in or you got advisor shares? Advisor shares. I'm listed on as an investor on their website. Okay, very good. But I think it's advisor shares. But you, did that mean you got a little cashy cash coming? A little cashy cash? I think I don't. They didn't disclose in the uh, no. report what the cash details of it was. Yeah, you got a little cash. Get your beak wet. Look at you. And you're wearing your space monkey shirt. Oh, I am wearing my. Speaking of launch, yeah. Speaking of launch, yes. Big big announcements from them coming. I just had them here by the office. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh, oh, and stay tuned for this week in web design coming up next. We're going to keep the stri the stream going live. We'll see you next time. Bye.